Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 557, The Questions People Ask That Have Not Tried Testosterone or Estrogen Pellets. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about uh, the questions that I'm asked on the street, in, in, in a plane or at dinner, when people come up to ask me about pellets, when they're trying to think about getting pellets, they've never gotten them, they don't know what they're like, they don't have a good friend. They may have heard Dave Glover talk about them, but they have specific questions to ask me that is going to help them make a decision as to whether they are going to come in and try um, pellets. And pellets are long acting, uh, hormone replacement with testosterone, and or estrogen, men just get testosterone, women get both usually. And um, and they wanna know if that is something for them. So they've got specific questions, but they're really the same specific questions that everybody else asks. So I thought I'd answer some of them briefly so that if you have these questions in your head, I can uh, speed along the process of you making your decision whether you want to get pellets or not. So. One, one of the first questions is, where are the pellets inserted? So we, the pellets are placed under the skin. So we use lidocaine, we numb you up, we make a tiny little cut and use a, um, an instrument that places the pellets under the skin and in the fat layer. Well, where do you have the most fat? You have the most fat in your hips, right above your, your buttocks, where you would get a an IM shot or a muscular intramuscular shot. So it's like your upper upper outer quadrant of your hip. It's safe there. There aren't any things that, there's nothing there that we can hurt by putting in pellets. And there's plenty of fat in most of us that will allow the pellets to slowly dissolve over four months for women and six months for men and give us a daily dose that we need. Now, <clears throat> The fat is able to dissolve the pellets because they are steroid. That's what we call them, steroid hormones. They're not from the adrenal gland, but they are fat soluble. So we can't like put thyroid in there because thyroid is uh, a protein or an amino acid. It doesn't dissolve in fat. So we can only, we're very lucky that we can put estradiol and testosterone in the hip and have it dissolve and replace what our ovary used to do. So that's really what we're doing. Women don't have um, a lifelong uh, support of their ovaries. At menopause, they literally just die. They be, And when I'd go in with surgery and look at ovaries to see if I had to take them out, if they were sick, if they were, if they were well, when I was taking out somebody's uterus for a different reason, the older the patient, the tinier their ovary was, they almost looked like little tiny little ropes. You could almost not tell what was ovary and what was the round ligament, which it sits next to. So they really aren't doing anything. Men have testosterone. Their testicles always make testosterone uh, their whole lives. But men often decrease their production of testosterone when they're 55 and above. I'm seeing men even younger than that, which is the trend in the United States, maybe because of the plastics. Plastics act as estrogens, and that blocks the testosterone uh, receptors and, and makes men become less testosteronized earlier. But that's a subject for another health cast. Um, we put, if we can't get our pellets into the hip, we don't try, I mean, we can tell if we can get them in or not. If somebody has no fat there, 
we can put them in the love handles, which is right here, and men usually have fat there, and it's a very safe place to put them. I prefer to put them in the hip. I think they're tolerated better. They don't bother you as much. There's not so much bruising. You, you forget you have them in after a few days. So we try to put it in the hip. If that doesn't work, then we put it in love handle. So those are our two areas that um, are the um, options. If you come in, that's where we're going to go. If you wear, uh, like we have a lot of police people, they wear guns or they wear tasers. So they that would rub on their hips. So oftentimes we'll go above above their belt. So in that in that love handle area. So you have to tell us. All, you know, we ask you what you do for a living. So usually we know before you even walk in where we're going to put your pellets. So next question is, do those pellets dissolve completely? And the answer is yes. They're made of, of testosterone powder made from yams and estradiol powder made from yams, and they dissolve completely. So you don't have something you have to take out. Like we used to have um, birth control um, that was in a plastic sheath, and you, you, I would insert them here, and you could actually feel the plastic sheath as long as you had that birth control. So it doesn't have anything like that. It just goes in and dissolves completely, and, and that's it, basically. The next time, if we put them in this hip this, this month, and four months later, we'll put them in the other hip or the other love handle. So we switch sides if possible. Some people just like them on one particular side, we listen to our patients, and, and we will do what you want. Now, just an aside, I had one patient who was a doctor who was a surgeon, and he demanded that I put the pellets in underneath his buttocks, basically, in the fat that you sit on, that I'm sitting on right now, and I'm not going to get up and show you where it is, but you get the idea. And he wanted it there because he said he's always standing, and I know he's standing for surgery, but we aren't always standing. I mean, we're not horses. We don't sleep standing up. So he, there were times when I knew he was going to be sitting, and I explained that to him, and he said, that's it. I want him there. So, so I obliged, and I did the insertion because <clears throat> I didn't want to um, have the nurse practitioner have to stress out over this. So I put, the ins I put the pellets in. He was fine as long as he was numb, but then... He was miserable for a month, maybe six weeks, because men get a lot of pellets, and he knew that too. He was well-informed, but he was sure he'd like them better there. I don't ever do that again. I don't care how much somebody wants them there. That's not happening because it hurts. When you're sitting on pellets, there's this little, it's like sitting on little BBs. That doesn't feel good. So in just because I know what's going to happen and a patient that's never had them before doesn't, I overrule that now because I've had the experience with it. And even another doctor didn't know what it was going to be like. And so now he has them where we put everybody else's. So, so pellets last four to six months, four months for women. Women need a lot less of a dose than men. But men can have their pellets last six months, so they only come in twice a year. So they have to have more pellets. They may have more bruising than women but they, ha they have to come in less often, which is a benefit for men because men um, often don't like to deal with this stuff, and women are kind of used to it because we have childbearing. So, um, so that it works. Um, I always get asked whether estrogen and testosterone pellets cause weight gain. So the answer is not what you're thinking. It doesn't cause fat gain. You lose fat, but you gain muscle. And that's what most people are trying to do. When you haven't had testosterone for a long time, your muscle shrinks. It's called sarcopenia. If, if you let it go a long time, it's sarcopenia, you become weak and you become bent over and you can't walk upstairs and it's a terrible thing. So over the long term, you lose muscle. When we give you your testosterone back and, and you would be losing weight, when we give you testosterone back, you make muscle and you're going to gain some weight from the muscle but you'll be getting leaner. You won't have as much fat. We use a body composition uh, called InBody to measure the body composition uh, to basically show people that they're making muscle and they're losing fat. They may stay the same weight 
weight is just a function of gravity. Uh, but you, most of my patients want to be smaller. Well, fat, a pound of fat's like this, and a pound of muscle is like this. So you'll be smaller if you have more muscle and less fat. So I try to explain that, but when they see it on the body composition machine, then that rings true to them. So they don't get upset about not losing weight right away. After a time, you start losing fat and you, your muscle stays stable or becomes just a little bit larger each time, but doesn't have a big jump. And you will actually lose weight. It took me, I had gained 20 pounds when I had my hysterectomy and my ovaries came out. It, it happened within a couple of weeks. And that involved having a lot of water weight gain and, um, but also a lot of fat just, I mean, I couldn't have eaten that much to make, make that much fat. I got very efficient. So when I started pellets, it took me a few months to start working out again because I, I was so tired I, have to catch, I had to catch up. Then, uh, and then I started wanting to work out. I worked out again. I got into my old routine. And at about um, nine months, ten months, I started losing weight, not just fat and gaining muscle. So I got back to normal within a year. It's not fast, but it's, it is permanent. So as long as you take the hormones, you will be, have a muscly, hopefully, I mean, some people just are really long and lean. You don't see their muscles, but they've got lots of muscle, but muscly and, and low fat kind of body. So that's what we're looking for. And that's what we're trying to help our patients get. But no, testosterone and estrogen don't, in this form, don't cause you to gain fat. Um, how long will it take for my body to get back to normal? Well, some people have only had a lack of hormone for a few months. Some people have had a lack of hormone for 10 years. Some people had a lot of testosterone in the past or a lot of estrogen in the past. And it takes us a while to get up to that level again. So I can't tell you that. That's something that... You have to be patient with us. Um, I've had patients, you know, get back to their norm normal weight in four months, lose 30 pounds. It's amazing. Um, and I've had some people who don't lose anything, but they, lo they really lose fat, gain muscle. And so it's a slower process for them. We try to help speed it up with um, metformin and with diet medications. But we want it to be lasting, so we don't want to speed it up too fast. Let's see, what else do they ask me? Um, we talked about how, how long will my pellets last? Well, um, some people metabolize things really fast. I can't look at you or look at your lab and tell you how fast you're going to go through your hormones. I, can, I, I have to look at what, hap what dose I gave you, uh, basically the reasons I gave you that dose, and then look at you in three and a half to four months and decide did it? Did you dissolve those pellets and use them up fast or slow or what I expected? That then helps me make a maintenance dose for you. So it's a little trial and error. I mean, honestly, uh, but it's an educated trial and error. And we've done this thousands and thousands of times. So we know what to expect, but we do keep an eye on you to see if you're a fast or slow metabolizer. Um, and that tells me how, how often you're going to have your pellets. If you're really fast, some people have to have them every three months. But if you're slow, it could be four to five. Average is four. Um, how long, how old can I be when I, how old, how long can I take pellets is the question. Well, I've taken them 20 years and I'm not stopping. And I don't think that there will be a time when I would stop unless... I had, a, I guess if I had a terminal illness and I knew I still would take them. I mean, I, I still need them what I, to keep my brain alive and to keep me thinking and to keep my sex drive and to keep, I mean, you don't want to stop living. And basically stopping testosterone is stopping living. Now, estrogen isn't nearly as crucial. Um, estrogen has a lot of good qualities, but it's not nearly as necessary in the aging process as testosterone. Testosterone slows the aging process and makes you feel and look younger. Testosterone gives women the female qualities, soft skin and hair that grows here. I mean, basically frontal hair is, is um, from estrogen. Uh, also, it 
you know, helps you with intercourse and having a, a wet vagina. So estrogen is important, but testosterone is the anti-aging hormone that is the basis of all of our treatments. And, and we have people who have taken these up into their 90s. And so that's the answer. The answer is as long as you want to feel well and, um, and function, because you'll, if you stop it, you'll start losing muscle and, and losing bone, osteoporosis sets in. All of the things that we associate with aging is counteracted by testosterone. Um, what diseases can be um, delayed or treated with testosterone pellets? Um, we have autoimmune diseases of all kinds get better. Our patients may not even have to take other medications at, at a point um, with their autoimmune diseases. Fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disease. MS is an autoimmune disease. Oftentimes, they can lower their medication levels and they will feel better. It helps their uh, immune system actually stabilize. Testosterone is a, an immune modulator, which means if your immune system's overactive and attacking your own tissues, it drops it down. If your immune system, like with AIDS, you don't have enough um, immune cells, T cells, uh, to kill cancers and viruses and, and bacteria, then testosterone raises that level. So that's, it's, it's important for your immune system, so it does actually help uh, counteract the symptoms of autoimmune diseases. It also helps with um, osteoporosis. Testosterone plus estrogen is much better than estrogen alone, um, of course, with vitamin D and, and, um, and calcium and vitamin K2. But the, the most effective bone builder is testosterone. That's why men have thicker bones than women. I mean, basically, they've got a whole, 10 times as much testosterone as we do. They don't generally get osteoporosis. Um, we can actually prevent dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, there's been several studies that have shown that people who have taken testosterone in any form, but pellets are the safest and the most effective, have delayed the onset of, uh, of um, Alzheimer's disease and dementia by 10 years. So if you were genetically going to get or, or, or developmentally going to get uh, Alzheimer's when you were 60, then you won't get it till you're 70. You get a 10, 10 year extra without losing your mind. Um, if you're a female, tes testosterone plus estrogen gives you a 20 year delay. So that's really, really amazing. And it's one that I brought to the attention of the Alzheimer's Association and they went, eh, showed them those studies and everything. Somehow they weren't interested, even though it's very it's very effective and very predictable that it, it will prevent these uh, it will prevent dementia. But they're looking for a pill, so we'll let them look. We'll, but we know the truth. Um, let's see. Parkinson's disease is less likely. Diabetes, obesity, and insulin resistance decreases. You need less medication, and it doesn't get as severe. You aren't going to have the severity of those diseases. So when people come to us, we take care of everything that we know how to take care of. But, but our basis for treatment is testosterone. For women, plus or minus estrogen, if they're not in menopause, they're making their own estrogen, they don't need estrogen. They just need the t testosterone. And then we treat other diseases that, are, that we can see coming down the, down the road for each patient. So we try to prevent those things so that patients can live a full and productive life. So those are some of the questions that I get when I'm just sitting around minding my own business and people figure out who I am and, and what I do. And I hope this answers some of your questions so that it helps you make a decision about treating yourself to uh, testosterone and estrogen so that you can prevent these diseases and get rid of many of your symptoms of aging. You'll feel younger. You'll be healthier. It's really worth it. 
Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.